Good afternoon, third grade. Here we have Miss Matone with your final read aloud for Earth Week. The book I'm sharing today is called The Great Kapok Tree, A Tale of the Amazon Rainforest by Lynn Cherry. Don't forget third grade, our target ELA standard for this week is character and setting. The setting of our book today is the Amazon rainforest, which is the home to some of the most unique creatures, plants, and animals of the entire world. The Great Cape Pop Tree. Two men walked into the rainforest moments before the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. So there's our main character. The smaller man took the ax he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off his sweat and ran that ran down his face. Whack, chop, whack, chop. So the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. So he fell asleep at the foot of the tree. And as you can see, all of the creatures live in the tree. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the ax had made. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. Very big snake that lives in the rainforest. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this tree and I fly from tree to tree, flower to flower. In this way, I pollinate all the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see all living things depend on one another. This is my favorite illustration because it has all of the beautiful butterflies, including the blue Morco butterfly, which is the largest butterfly. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man, Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, you come back for another, then another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die and there will be nothing left. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. Look at all those critters. Lots of monkeys climbing from tree to tree. A toucan, a macaw, and a cockatoo flew down from the canopy. Senor, you must not cut down the tree. We have flown over the rainforest and see what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush and soon the forest disappears. Once there was life and beauty, but now there would only be black and smoldering ruins. So we're hoping that all of the creatures can convince the man not to chop down the tree. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down the great kapok. So see the little frogs? The poison dart frog is also a frog that has a home in the rainforest. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended in, no one had noticed him. Now he leaped down and padded silently over to the sleeping man, and he growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? So all of these animals and creatures live in the rainforest. Do you see why the setting is so important? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered, Senor, do you know what animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen and Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy what gives us all life. So third grade, this is why trees are so important. They give us oxygen to breathe. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree. 
The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down the tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. So even the anteater lives in the rainforest. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down the canopy when the first men appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Going ever so slowly over to the man, she says, Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? There we go, a cute little sloth. He lives in the trees of the rainforest. A child from the Yamomamo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man and murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. Many tribes live in the rainforest and are very protective of it. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him, the creatures that depended on this great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. So look at all of these animals that live in the rainforest. They all depend on this big tree. It's their home. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he had heard no sound for the creatures were strangely silent. So as he awoke, the creatures were silent, waiting to see what the man was going to do. A lot of books that we've read this year, third grade, the character has changed from the beginning to the end. And in this case, we're hoping that the character changes his, de his decision on whether or not to cut down the tree. So it's what's really important to think about characters and how they change. The man stood and picked up his ax. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly he stopped, he turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated, then he dropped the ax and walked out of the forest. So he decided not to cut down this huge, magnificent, beautiful tree. It's a good book, guys. So now we're gonna go back to our PowerPoint. Who is the main character? The main character is the senior, the animals and the child from the village. What is the setting? The setting is the Amazon rainforest. How do the actions of the character connect to the setting? A man walked into the forest and started cutting down the tree. He fell asleep and the animals came to him in a dream and said the tree was their home. When the senor woke up, he saw the child and the animals. He left the tree alone. What we're gonna do today, Husky Pups, is compare and contrast the settings from a book that you read to the setting you live in. So I'm going to model first. I compared the setting of Olean to the rainforest. Both settings have trees and animals. Both settings have people there trying to cut down the trees because even in Olean, trees are cut down. In the great Kapok book, it's the rainforest, but in Olean, we live in a small city with some hills. In Olean, we have squirrels and bears and deer, but in the rainforest, there is a jaguar, a sloth and monkeys. In the rainforest, it is humid and hot all the time. But in New York, we have the four seasons. All of these read alouds this week, I enjoyed them and I cannot wait to hear which one was your favorite. I'm not sure which one was mine. I really enjoyed them all. and I love the illustrations in all of them. So I hope you learned lots of facts about Earth Day and I can't wait to hear what you're going to do to make the world a better place.